what is self-supervised learning and why is it the dark matter of intelligence? I'll start by the dark matter part. <laughs> uh, there is obviously a kind of learning that humans and animals are uh, are doing that we currently are not reproducing properly with machines or with AI, right? So the most popular approaches to machine learning today are, or paradigms, I should say, are supervised learning and reinforcement learning. And they are extremely inefficient. Supervised learning requires many samples for learning anything. And reinforcement learning requires a ridiculously large number of trial and errors to for you know a system to learn anything. Um, and that's why we don't have self-driving cars. <laughs> that's a big leap from one to the other. Okay, so that to solve difficult problems, you have to have a lot of uh, human annotation f for supervised learning to work. And to solve those difficult problems with re reinforcement learning, you have to have some way to maybe simulate that problem such that you can do that large scale kind of learning that reinforcement learning requires. Right, so how is it that you know most teenagers can learn to drive a car in about 20 hours of uh, practice? Whereas uh, even with millions of hours of simulated practice, mm -hmm. a self-driving car can't actually learn to drive itself properly. Um, and so obviously we're missing something, right? And, and it's quite obvious for a lot of people that, you know, the immediate response you get from many people is, well, you know, humans use their background knowledge to learn faster. And they're right. Now, how was that background knowledge acquired? And that's the big question. So now you have to ask, you know, how do babies in the first few months of life learn how the world works? mostly by observation, because they can hardly act in the world. Uh, and they learn an enormous amount of background knowledge about the world that may be the, the basis of what we call common sense. Uh, this type of learning, it's not learning a task, it's not being reinforced for anything, it's just observing the world and figuring out how it, how it works. Building world models, learning world models. Um, how do we do this? And how do we reproduce this in, in machines? So self-supervised learning is you know, one instance or one attempt at trying to reproduce this kind of learning. Okay, so you're looking at just observation, so not even the interacting part of a child. It's just sitting there watching mom and dad walk around, pick up stuff, all of that. That's the that's what you mean by background knowledge. Perhaps not even watching mom and dad, just, you know, watching, watching. the world go by. <laughs> just having eyes open or having eyes closed or the very act of yeah. opening and closing eyes that the world appears and disappears, all of that basic information. And you're saying in, in order to learn to drive, like the reason humans are able to learn to drive quickly, some faster than others, is because of the background knowledge. They were able to watch cars operate in the world in the many years leading up to it, the physics of basic objects, and all that kind of That's stuff. That's right. I mean, the basic physics of objects, you don't even know, you, you don't even need to know, you know, how a car works, right? Because that you can learn fairly quickly. I mean, the example I use very often is uh, you're driving next to a cliff and you know in advance because of your, you know, understanding of intuitive physics that uh, if you turn the wheel to the right, the car will veer to the right, will run off the cliff, fall off the cliff, and nothing good will come out of this, right? Um, but if you are a sort of, you know, tabula rasa reinforcement learning system that doesn't have a model of the world, uh, you have to repeat falling off this cliff thousands of times before you figure out it's a bad idea. And then a few more thousand times before you figure out how to not do it. And then a few more million times before you figure out how to not do it in every situation you ever encounter. So self-supervised learning still has to have some source of truth being told to it by That's somebody. Right. And it's, so you have to figure out a way without human assistance or without significant amount of human assistance to get that truth from the world. So the mystery there is um, how much signal is there? How much truth is there that the world gives you? Whether it's the human world, like you watch YouTube or something like that, or it's the more natural world. So how much signal is there? So here's the trick. There is way more signal in sort of a self-supervised setting than there is in either a supervised or reinforcement setting. And this is going to my, you know, analogy of the cake. Yes. Uh, the, you know, le cake as someone has called it, where when you try to figure out how much information you ask the machine to predict and how much feedback you give the machine at every trial, 
In reinforcement learning, you give the machine a single scalar. You tell the machine you did good, you did bad, and you and you and you only tell this to the machine once in a while. When I say you, it could be the the universe telling the machine, right? Mm. Um, but it's just one scalar. And so as a consequence, there is you you cannot possibly learn something very complicated without many 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 trials where you get many many feedbacks uh, of this type. Supervised learning, you you give a few bits to the machine uh, at every every sample. Let's say you're training a, a system on you know recognizing Im images on ImageNet. There is 1,000 categories. That's a little less than 10 bits of information per sample. But self supervised learning here is a setting. You ideally we don't know how to do this yet, but ideally you would show a machine a segment of a video, and then stop the video and ask ask the machine to predict what's going to happen next. And so you let the machine predict, and then you let time go by and uh, show the machine what actually happened and hope the machine will you know, learn to do a better job at predicting next time around. There's a huge amount of information you give the machine because it's an entire video clip of, uh, you know, of the future after the video clip you fed it um, in the first place. So both for language and for vision, there's a subtle, seemingly trivial construction, but maybe that's representative of what is required to create intelligence, which is filling the gap. So filling the gaps. It, it sounds dumb, but can you, <laughs> it's, it's, it is possible that you can solve all of intelligence in this way, just for both language, just give a sentence and continue it, or give a sentence and there's a gap in it, uh, some words blanked out and you fill in what words go there. For vision, you give a sequence of images and predict what's gonna happen next, or you fill in what happened in between. Do you Something think it's like possible it. that formulation alone as a signal for self-supervised learning can solve intelligence for vision and language? I think that's our best shot at the moment. Um, so whether uh, this will Take us all the way to you know human level intelligence or something, or just cat level intelligence mm -hmm. uh, is not clear. But among all the possible approaches that people have proposed, I think it's our best shot. So I think this idea of uh, an intelligent system filling in the blanks, either you know predicting the future, inferring the past, filling in missing information. Uh, you know, I'm currently filling the blank of what is behind your head and what you what your head looks like, and you know, from from the back, uh, because I have you know basic knowledge about how humans are made, and I don't know if you're gonna you know what, what you're gonna say at which point you're gonna speak, whether you're gonna move your head this way or that way, which way you're gonna look, but I know you're not gonna just dematerialize and reappear three meters uh, down the hall, uh, you know, because I know what's possible and what's impossible uh, according to intuitive physics. So well, you have a model of what's possible, what's impossible, and then you'd right. be very surprised if it happens and you, then you'll have to reconstruct your model. Right, so that, that's the model of the world. It's what tells you, you know, what fills in the blanks. So given your partial information about the state of the world, given by your perception, uh, your, your model of the world fills in the missing information and that includes predicting the future, predicting the past, uh, you know, filling in things you don't immediately perceive. And that doesn't have to be purely generic vision or visual information or generic language. You can go to specifics like uh, predicting what control decision you make when you're driving in a lane. You have a sequence of images uh, from a, a vehicle and then you could, you have information if you record it on video where the car ended up going. So you can go back in time and predict where the car went based on the visual information. That's very specific, domain specific. That's right, but the question is whether we can come up with sort of a generic uh, method uh, for you know training machines to do this kind of uh, prediction or filling in the blanks. So right now, uh, this type of approach has been unbelievably successful in the context of natural language processing. Uh, every modern natural language processing is pre-trained in self-supervised manner to fill in the blanks. So you, you show it a sequence of words, you remove 10% of them, and then you train some gigantic neural net to predict the words that are missing. Mm -hmm. That And once you've pre-trained that network, you can use the internal representation learned by it as input to you know uh, something that you train supervised or, or whatever. Um, that's been incredibly successful. Not so successful in images, although it's making progress. 
and uh, and it's it's based on uh, sort of manual data augmentation. Uh, we can go into this later, but what has not been successful yet is training from video. So getting a machine to learn to represent the visual world, for example, by just watching video. Nobody has really succeeded in doing this. 